Hi everyone, welcome to this video on making um, textures by using a glazing technique. Glazing is uh, a technique by which you layer watercolor one on top of the other and create uh, more interesting shapes, shades. So I'm just going to use some random colors and start making floral texture. And I'm making this really light I'm using a masking tape because uh, I'm making this as part of my journal during a period of lockdown in the country. Um, so I thought this was an interesting opportunity to create a visual record of the goings on in the city, in our homes. So the colors I am using are mostly shades of red and I'm going to liberally merge them. The color used earlier was scarlet and now this is crimson. So when painting it's a, uh, I know watercolor scares a lot of people, um, it's got this reputation, I don't know why, but it's actually a very fun color. It is only as intimidating as the subject you choose to work with when you are doing watercolor. So if you choose a subject like life or portraiture or um, making cityscapes or something they're only as hard as the subject is it would be um, equally difficult to make illustrations in those subjects regardless of your medium but yes watercolor requires a certain amount of planning and I think what people are scared of is the fact that you cannot really go back and correct it and so most people prefer to take an easy way out and try acrylic first. So if you, if you let go of your expectations of what you want out of your illustration, then watercolor is actually very fun. It's like a kid. If you decide right in the beginning that there are no mistakes, then you're able to do a much better job because you have no expectations. Now, after I have made the initial texture in a very watery consistency, I am going ahead and making a texture on top of that. This is again, it's not exactly a glaze, but it is layering. I could do a second layer of a watery shade on the same flowers and this would be glazing. And I'm gonna also choose another color altogether. So you see how a combination of the two colors 
even though they are light and create a third color and this is the fun bit about watercolor glazing is an important technique in watercolor simply also because um, watercolor dries at least 30% uh, 40% lighter than uh, it goes on first so because it becomes lighter it's important that um, to make the picture really stand out you use multiple shades or multiple layers now I have used this masking tape in the center because I want to write um, the day this is day 7 I'm also going to make some lighter colors. Um, I'm going to try and go over some areas with a lighter color. Now, this is considered a complete no no in watercolor because the light color doesn't, uh, may not be seen. But as you can see, that it still contributes, it still changes the base color now you can add a whole lot of textures to these um, to the base color or the base texture can keep changing the color as you want to this can be a very liberating technique because you can start a task like that with absolutely no particular plan or a skill and uh, it's excellent for even kids to practice this so while you are making all these textures you can pay attention to um, how you are holding the brush whether you can change directions well it's important to know how to wield the brush literally there's no other word that's um, half the skill in watercolor illustration I would think if you are able to hold the brush properly and make marks that's about as much as you need like um, as you can see I'm not being particularly strict about borders and outlines I'm more shapes for that matter so this can provide a certain relief to 
anyone who is intimidated by what follows. And I keep going over and over. And the more you layer it, the more interesting it starts becoming. Surprisingly, you see very little of this technique. I'm not really sure why. But I found that this is one of the most, this turned out to be one of the more popular um, techniques that I have taught in my um, on-site classes. I think we should do it. This is a brilliant texture. And uh, I'm going to just add a few elements here and there to make the design pop a little bit, a little bit of cerulean blue. So I often tend to continue the design through the masking as well because this piece lands up looking so pretty when you remove it that it's uh, in itself, it also becomes a piece of art. Yeah, to that effect, I'm going to just add some more elements into this, and then you can see when it comes off, it really looks smashy. Just filling out a few negative spaces here and there. I like to keep my palette fairly contiguous. A contiguous palette is nothing but colors that are next to each other in a color wheel. So starting from say yellow, I have yellow, orange, uh, slightly orangey red, slightly bluish red and then into the blues. But I wouldn't be very comfortable using greens on this or too much purple on this. Uh, purple would still be okay but definitely not green because that would suddenly just add too much drama. Now I'm going to put my at the bottom. Hopefully I have bungled up. Create the mark. So I'm going to be using this beautiful set of uh, letters. As much as I love illustrating uh, or drawing letter forms, I also love using um, classical letter forms like this. very firm letter form gives a certain formality uh, and at first glance makes uh, the viewer a little more impressed than with just hand lettering however pretty your hand lettering might be
beautiful. And there's the uh, touches. Sometimes in design it's really fun to play with <coughs> perception. Now, I could do 30th March here, but I think I'm going to do it over here because there is a little bit of blank space here. So, I'm going to make 3 zero just above the M and A. Three so well, it's important always to check that you're printing it the right way. So it's uh, helpful if you have a rough paper so that you can check it. I've had situations where I have gone and bungled up and printed it upside down and that's been such a shame because when you make a beautiful piece you just bungle up and I'll have to hide it with a sticker or something like that. Okay. Let's so that's done. And working with the stamp pad, obviously be careful that your hands are not stained at the end of the stamping. And uh, now, the moment of truth, I shall pull out the masking tape very gently. There are a few sections over here which are still to dry, I think, but I'm just going to paste it over here so you see how pretty it looks. See, it becomes your own designer tape. So some elements over here are still wet. I would um, wait um, a little, but in the interest of saving time, I'm just going to go ahead and write day six. So before I write, I always visualize the space. I would write D, A, Y, a little dot, and a largish. This is something that must become a habit that you do not put pen to paper till you have assessed your space and figured out what you will draw where. Now, since I have the gold pen handy, I'm just going to go and put a certain amount of glitter all over and make this look pretty as well. That's it. My first video on creating a general page using the technique of glazing and layering watercolor. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to send me your comments and uh, watch this space.